The three Highland brothers, this is Patrick, 26 years old. And if you're going to watch for anything in particular in this fight, watch for the left hooks of Patrick. He can change from that jab to a hook and a body shot that really is a rib cruncher. Coveney giving away an amazing amount of height here for this level. He's only 5'4", according to the stats, but he looks even smaller than that at the title to weigh in yesterday. Highland's record, unblemished, 18 points, 18 wins. And his stoppage is exactly 50%. He's won nine of them by KO. Took those last three shots, as you saw on the left shoulder. Hasn't opened yet, up yet, Highland, but when he gets an opening, he'll go. And maybe Coveney would go as well. Out. Oh, it's a right hand of the body there from Highland. He punches. It looks like to hurt all the time, Patrick Highland. These fellows are very well trained as amateurs, very well coached, and they've come through. If you're having a, a family world contest, the three Highlands would certainly be well up there as scoring brothers. What he has to do here, Jim, is when you're fighting southpaws, you have to make sure that your left foot is outside the right foot so that you can get your balance. And once you do that, the southpaw then is open for left hooks to the body, left hooks to the head, or straight rights. You know, that's what you have to do. But it's very, very, very important that you keep your left foot outside the right foot. It means then you're in control, you have your perfect balance, and you can offload your straight right hands and your left hooks. First we saw a right hand of the body which looks stiff and we saw a left of the body there which equally looks strong there from Highland. Only the first round, three quarters of a minute to go on that. And even in this early stage you can see that Highland is controlled, he has the greater variety of punch. Takes his shot very nicely and doesn't get involved in any infighting at all in the early stages of this, which is what Vicky Coveney would probably like. He'd have a better chance inside, but at distance, as you can see here, Highland is able to pick him off with nice, neat, proper boxing shots. And take a loose of action as well if and when Coveney comes. You see that? Five punches thrown by Coveney. Uh, it's fair to say, not one of them got through to the target. As we come to the end of the first round, Highland's round was very good when he fought Manuel Sequeira at the 0-2 back last September, which was his last to throw fight at TKO in the sixth round then, six of eight. And he ended that with a series of really punishing body shots. Which we haven't seen a great deal of, of any tonight. Oh, the confidence level on that. On the graph of Coveney is rising all the time. Step off. The gap between them is closing, and that's the fifth round. Both scoring. He's doing everything to sit, not only the south pole, but to sit the smaller man. He's in close. He's not fighting at long range. You can still pressurize guys when you're taller. You still can come forward and keep things at long range. But he's doing none of that. You know, he's got the height advantage, he's got the reach advantage, and he's not employing those now. He's just everything's being done to sit Coveney. Back. 
what he has to do here is that he has to, he has to sort of dig deep here and move it, move it up a notch because if he doesn't, if it keeps going against here, Coveney's going to grow in confidence and, and in fact you can actually see Coveney going ahead in points because like, there's right now there's very little in this fight. I mean, points-wise. Coveney's had a good couple of rounds, the past couple of rounds have been fine. Like he, he's, in my eyes, he's, he's creeping marginally. Oh, so. you know, and Patrick Hennett is doing absolutely nothing here. He's doing everything, I can't believe, he's doing everything to suit the smaller man, he's doing everything to suit the southpaw. He wants to sort of knock it up a notch, you know, and start throwing a, a few bombs here, start getting those left hooks to the body and those right hands across, because that's the only way to, to beat these guys and to do damage. Imagine if you asked Helen what he thought of third thought he'd hate him, I'd say. <laughs> He's not the only one. <laughs> Join the queue. Crowd behind us here, son, get busy, Patrick, and that's very good advice. Most of the people here behind me are in boxing clubs, amateur the boxing clubs, so they know their stuff. It started off as though Harlan was going to go a bomb here in this one, but there's not that he's gone off the rails completely, but he's by no means boxing at his peak, judging on the five rounds we've seen so far. See him stuff again. Like Patrick Hens didn't it? He had some success. That was one, two, three, but there's no real power. Because if I could have seen his feet, I could have told you his feet were right in, in between uh, Coveney's feet. And he's throwing punches right in the sides, they're hitting the gloves the whole lot. Well, let's hear what his dad is going to say to him. So far, he steps into the punches to Billy. He said nothing. <laughs> Patrick to the power of two. It's like Patrick, Ryan makes it three Patricks. I think they are giving him a hard time. <laughs> they, all, they almost bombed him out there, didn't they? There we go, round six. And you'll notice that uh, Highland has gone southpaw. You can't beat him, John. He's Punches well off both hands at Patrick Hallen, and maybe this is the key to it, to dominating it. He's gone southpaw, and it is already beginning to pay dividends. Unusual switch, to say the least. So far in this round, he's boxed all of them. And now he's switched back again. Well, if, Co if Coveney was a big puncher, Jimmy, that would be a disaster because Coveney's a natural uh, southpaw. Patrick Hennon's not. Coveney, he's not a big puncher here. And uh, so you can do those things and take a chance. Because, uh, if he had been a puncher, that would have been a, a, a type that, that I wouldn't employ because you're in the danger zone when you do that when, you, when you're in, in against a puncher. Well, that was only a threat. He's back to his normal mode of operation. It may be that Highland has even gotten annoyed at himself now. He can't dominate this fight, which on paper beforehand, and to all known available information, looks as though he was going to win it with a considerable amount of these. Because, of, among other things, Coveney has lost his last six fights. One on points, two on points. Like the last six on points, uh, but it's not, it's not a record that anyone would be uh, afraid of. His, his percentage of stoppages, Coveney's, is just over 5%, as against 50% of Patrick Highlands. So that in itself might suggest something. And yet, here we are, just above our corner here, we have Coveney carrying the fight to his man. Team Highland must be saying, how could this be happening? Not jabbing, you might be able to hear it behind. Jab, 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 jab. Now he's gone back to a right hand lead, southpaw, right foot forward. So a pair of southpaws now. You 
sparing use of the left hand from Patrick Haller. And the bell ends another round. There's definitely not an unhappy Kofi who returns to his team in their blue corner. South Foss does again, and that is a dangerous tactic to employ, especially if you're fighting a guy that can punch. But obviously, Colby's not a big puncher, so that's why Patrick Hill is doing that. But he's making things very, very difficult for himself tonight. I don't understand why. I can't put my finger on it, but uh, he certainly he's making this a harder fight than what it should be. Each of them fighting professionally for a 19th time. Ireland by far the better record. Ireland unbeaten. Box 79 professional rounds as against 93 rounds for Coveney. This is the seventh. Four rounds left to this one. Now, right at the top of this round, a different Highland appears from the corner. This is what he wants to do. He wants to drive himself forward, put a bit of power behind the punch, let this man know what he means to do business. He wants to he has to take charge. He hasn't been taking charge his past three or four rounds, so he wants to step it up a notch now, bang the left hand and the right hand, and keep that left foot like that outside when he's right there's something he's oh, there he goes there it is there he goes and there's a beautiful punch from Patrick Harland and Coveney staggers to his feet and Neil Keith and the left foot was outside absolutely. the right foot absolutely that's where the power came well, from maybe the first time that Coveney survives this he'll be doing very well My Harland has him now he's the stronger puncher he's the better boxer he's the better fighter and that foot has finally found its way. It's not exactly ballroom dancing, but it's over now, and Patrick Ireland is again the featherweight champion of Ireland. As soon as he planted his left foot outside, the right foot of Coveney, his balance was restored, and that right hand had venom in it. That was one for the staggers, and that's where Coveney went. McCauley, you called him. Being the winner and still Cutaway Champion of Ireland, Patrick Highland. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause and very good moment indeed. Vicky Coveney. I know you ended in the seventh, but it was difficult enough, really, wasn't it? It was difficult um, with, the, with the guy's height. He's a, he's a very good fighter. I've seen him, well, I didn't see him fight, but I've heard he's had uh, tough opponents over in the UK and he's been on the badly end of decisions, and I could see why. But um, I, I needed to get me range. I was patient. It's called it's pro boxing, there's 10 rounds, so I wasn't trying to blow him out in the first few. So I picked my shots. I started in the sixth to the seventh, I started picking up my current well. And mind you, he's a tough boy. He's one of the best of FOS so far. And was it the fact that he was a southpaw was the problem? Um, not really. Like, as, as I won my belt, I, I beat a southpaw. I've, I've boxed out. My last fight was a southpaw. I stopped that guy. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm 5'8", five, 5'9", five, for a featherweight. He's a small guy. Like, it's, when they're dodging, like, you know what I mean? It's hard to, it's hard to hit them. But uh, credit to him. Like, he's a tough boy. He's one of the best pounds I ever fought. Uh, Patrick's a good fighter. Uh, I thought I was in front. And, but like you said, he's patient. He's a good 10-round fighter. And uh, he's probably, I box the best fighters in Britain, and he's up there with him. He's the best one, the best punchers. I've never been knocked out like that. I've never been up in a ring like that before, so well done. Good fight. What about a European title? Well, hopefully that's the, uh, this year, anyways, yeah. Like, I'll, as I say, I'll work more in the gym and I'll perform much better. But, you know, hopefully at the end of this year, I should have a European title. I'm ready to fight any featherweight in Europe, the likes of uh, anyone in Britain. Anyone in Europe, I'll take any of them on, no problem. The name, the name Kiko Martinez, is that on the radar? Uh, Kiko is there, yeah. If he wants to fight, I'll fight him, no problem. I'll uh, show all the, the Irish fans that Kiko's just one-dimensioned boy, and I'll punch the head off him.